Okay, this is just a quick video. I'm going to show you the upgrade procedure for the new Ultimate One Megabyte firmware update, which is going to be available shortly. It's very simple to apply it. And there aren't a great deal of significant changes, but some quite useful ones, some minor bug fixes. And with luck, this will be the end of it because I'm pretty much out of code space now. Um, I did have some other ideas for stuff to do, but it would require a lot of compression stuff. And uh, I think it's run its course now. I want to move on to something different. So aside from bug fixes, this is probably going to be it. So we've got respect set up here. Um, we've got the ultimate one megabyte firmware ATR attached. This is one way of doing things. You can do things differently if you want. You can use virtual folders and such things, but easiest option, probably just mount the ATR, drive one. And then, so if we log drive one here, you can see we've got uFlash and the firmware ROM 64k. So if we run uFlash, divisor O, divisor 0, 23k of code, just like that. Wow. Go down to the firmware slot. I select the firmware ROM, press enter. There we go. Simple. If it was any easier than this, it, it just wouldn't be worth doing. There wouldn't be anything to do. Verifying phase. There we go. I'm hop into the BIOS. I see a couple of things slightly changed. The basic state, thanks to. Uh, Fiquai on the forum uh, creating a customized operating system for the incognito for XL XE mode which boots right cartridges which is something we'd never envisaged happening on the incognito but it's uh, useful I think there's only uh, two or three available cartridges that uh, actually can benefit from this including monkey wrench 2 uh, but that exposed some issues with the method of persistently disabling basic uh, which I corrected and the implementation turned out to be a lot simpler so uh, thank you to Fiquai for flagging that up it uh, proved beneficial and I've carried these simplifications back to the ultimate BIOS so instead of basic default being enabled or disabled now now we've got basic state disabled and default because I thought about uh, the fact that you could have a custom operating system which disables basic anyway um, so I don't know what the default basic state of the operating system is going to be depending on what the operating system is so I've changed it to disabled and default now De default might happen to be disabled for all I know I don't know but anyway and of course this is only available when the PBI BIOS is active a um, couple of other cosmetic fixes in the BIOS, nothing too dramatic, so you should be seeing. Uh, you'll see the year 2019 in there when the final version is uploaded. Um, that was pretty much all there was with the main BIOS. If we go to the, if we save that and we go to the loader. Uh, in the loader, um, the most significant change is that the FMS, which is this here, which is the, your mini CIO disk operating system, which works with FAT, it works exclusively with FAT32 and FAT16, and exclusively with the side cartridge device. So what this enables you to do is... Um, load XEX files and have read-only access to the disk uh, by the normal methods. Now previously th this just implemented some sort of variation on the DOS2 uh, API 
Uh, there was no 64 file limit, but other than that, there was no access to, to folders or anything. I didn't want to try and impersonate Sparta DOS X because that would be a bit of a fool's errand because any software which believed it was running under Sparta DOS X was liable to make all sorts of calls to, uh, to functions that don't exist in this implementation. So what I did eventually decide to do, uh, and this was... Uh, Something Michael St. Pierre suggested because uh, hopefully we're going to write a new MIDI player for the MIDI devices uh, created. Uh, and he said would it, it would be nice if the MIDI player, when launched from the loader here, without DOS, could have access to the folder structure on the disk. So what I kind of came up with was a sort of a halfway uh, implementation which doesn't uh, impersonate any other DOS with folder functionality, but what it does do is provide access to the folders and all the underlying application has to do is issue um, the commands we've implemented, uh, change current directory, get path, etc. So um, anything that's coded up for Sparta DOS X is, isn't going to work probably unless it just blindly issues um, subdirectory CIO commands, um, but if you just if the software looks for the uh, the appropriate loader version, it'll work. Uh, and if we, for example, look for U Flash here, the latest version. So let's say you wanted to use U Flash from the loader, but you had your ROMs in a folder, well now you get access to the folders, just as you would if you were using the program from the Sparta DOS X command prompt. So if we go to this folder name here, and we get access to the folder, and we can go back up a level in the usual manner, and that all works very nicely. So you're no longer limited to a flat file system. Um, I fixed a bug in the drop down lists whereby the selection bar would vanish off the edge of the window, etc. etc. So that all works now. Um, the other thing, the other fix in the loader worth mentioning is a fix for the Pang, Pang XEX, uh, which had an issue because it used the same PBI reserved page zero locations as the loader itself and that's not in itself a problem but the loader was relying on this variable not being um, clobbered between segment loads so we fixed that by just not caring whether or not that uh, although that location is still used it doesn't matter if it's overwritten by the segment initialization so if we look for pang i think it's on the disk this keyboard would work there we go and now pang works so press any key and i think this change to the loader module will probably improve compatibility yet further and there we go pang works um set it and forget it it's just simple simple update process takes five minutes and things are yet better than they were before so that's about all there is to it so Thank you very much for watching and I uh, hope you enjoy the update and uh, if you have any further ideas or you notice any problems please let me know when time comes to update. Uh, I've got a few bytes space left. Yeah so thanks for watching and hope you enjoy it and uh, I will see you in the next video.